Alright YouTube, back again with another market analysis for the London session. Uh, we had quite a bit of movement today on S&P 500, also on the Dow was a pretty decent sized drop off since yesterday. So uh, we'll review some of this for you guys. We're going to go over the S&P 500, go over NASDAQ. Um, we're going to also go over gold and oil for you guys. Uh, markets are moving right now. Uh, show you some of the ideas of trade that we had prior and what we'll kind of be looking out for during the London session. But just to, guy, just to give you guys a little bit of a backdrop for today, um, there was a, a lot of movement. You guys can see this is kind of where we started, right at this general area of... Mm, actually, let me erase this. I think it starts from like 08 or something. So uh, let me adjust this real quick. Mm, yeah, maybe about 11 or 12. And we drop back down. Uh, you guys see that gap we had on Sunday, which is my time Sunday, and then we had a move that was just completely dropping off from there. So we actually had some opportunities to trade some of this uh, yesterday for me, and then um, also this morning was a lot of movement. But you guys can see we have some levels highlighted. Uh, we got this resistance level up here at about 59, which was during this Asian session. Uh, we hit. So I was targeting this level for the London session, didn't expect it to move that quickly. Just this whole coronavirus has the markets moving uh, pretty, like a lot, I guess you'd say. But um, we did push all the way up into that area, 59 to close to 60. We double topped right there and we came back down. So we got the move up. We had an opportunity for a breakout above from about 45. And you can see that push. Uh, I think my, my trades were about 45.75 and um, we had about four lots to push to the upside. So didn't capture the whole move into 59, was targeting about 52.75, but it was, a, it was a lot of movement there and uh, happened pretty drastically. So some of the guys in the room also caught uh, some of the move down off that fade, off the resistance back into the actual trend direction but taking a look at this guys we are in a strong long-term downtrend so we we'll just want to pay attention to that if we hold resistance at these levels we could see the market starting to move back down into the 3220 area for the support right here so we can highlight those areas for you guys but we'll eclipse this you can see we had a bounce off once came all the way to the bottom twice three times couldn't break below that level and then we pushed all the way back up so that's kind of what we're looking out for today uh, as of right now we have a movement and it should come back down into our support area which is probably going to be right around the 43s uh, right around the area we were looking for a buy a dip and the 45 was a breakout to the upside so I'll show you guys what that looks like on the four tick and actually how the um, moving averages can kind of go hand in hand uh, with all of this. I know one of the guys here that watches the YouTube uh, and subscribes had some questions regarding it. So let's go over it a little bit. Let's lock this down here for a sec. Um, you can see where we put our resistance levels right here at about 59 and also well, 58 to 59 and then 46 to 52. You can see where we tried that break to the upside. Um, reason behind that was because we failed this level once twice kept moving it down right into the downward trend came back up fill it again another two times three times uh, we filled that area right there and then we came up again with strong momentum to push to the upside and uh, at this point there was a lot of things that went hand in hand but let's just show you guys so you guys can see how the actual studies work with it but putting up the studies on here uh, will unhide I know some of the guys were asking how you can kind of use this to go hand in hand with your trading uh, where well, you can see a couple things. Um, one being you came to, my levels might be a little bit wrong because I know they were wrong yesterday, but we had a previous day low. We had a point of control. You can see that actual 200 moving day uh, or moving average, the 200 haul moving average comes underneath now. The VWAP is overhead, which we started to target, but we're talking right in this general area right here where the VWAP actually comes underneath the moving uh, the moving average, the whole moving average is underneath and goes slightly above, but the trend, you can see the 200 moving average actually gives you a clear trend direction, right? So you can see how it moves. When it goes over, the markets move down. When it comes under, usually the markets will come back up, right? So you can see how that actually flows with the actual price action movement. But 
um, what we don't want to do is we don't want to try to use this to get um, only specifically for entries what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to identify this with our eyes first right so the reason I don't really put all this stuff up is because I want you guys to see the actual naked charts right so I want you guys to see just clear no indicators no moving averages nothing no pivots anything I want you guys to see the clear structure that the price action creates um, and the reason being is because markets usually are random all right and because markets are random movement in order to be successful in my opinion at trading you want to have to have some type of systematical approach and process some type of rules you follow before you look to enter trades and you also have to understand the core the fundamentals the foundations of trading which is your price action movement which creates the actual market structure to give you an idea of how you can wrap a strategy around the market structure and learn to be consistent with that same strategy every single day right it doesn't mean that trades are always going to work out in your favor what the, basically you're doing is you're saying you know what I back tested this strategy over and over and over again and maybe I have a 50 60 70 percent win rate with maybe 20 30 40 percent of losses right as long as your risk management is good meaning you have a higher reward than risk then you're always more than likely gonna come out on top every day you're always gonna have more green days than red days meaning and the reason for it is because you're gonna take more trades and you might even lose I don't know if you take three trades you might lose two of those trades and win one and you still break even because you have a two to one uh, reward to risk what that means is you have you times it by two so if you're risking eight ticks on one lot your reward is eight plus eight so sixteen times it by two so sixteen ticks so if you lose two trades you lose sixteen ticks but if you win one you also win sixteen ticks All right so you see how that works you could have more losing trades than winning trades and you can still come out on top throughout the day but the main focus here is going to be how you can learn to consistently follow rules and a process to get you where you want to be and I think that's the best way to become successful in trading is not only to have risk, risk management but to also have a specific process keep it simple have that process follow those rules every single day and you'll find that that consistency actually draws the money to you versus you trying to chase it in markets right so you got that mindset which transitions from the outcome of the trade into the actual process of what's going on why am I doing this where am I targeting what's my exit what's my entry you know I mean? and you have those reasons why you're following that process and you're not too worried about you know what if I get stopped out here I don't know what to do next you know what I mean or I want to revenge trade or I want to impulsively get right back into the markets no what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be trying to follow that process again looking out for when the market is less random and you can identify something you've seen before and then you can say you know what this could be a possibility for a high probability trade setup right so that's what we're doing here but um, throwing these studies back on you guys can see how we kind of use it the moving averages come underneath that trend right here this 200 hole moving average is important for me right because if I'm looking for qualifiers such as you know what we came to a support we had uh, two rotations at the support and we couldn't uh, get past that we bounced back up and again we tried once twice couldn't failed it if I didn't take it somewhere right around this general area my next opportunity would have been here where we push up higher and then we come right back and the reason is because I have a set of rules one of my set of rules is that we break two resistances before we look for the trend to reverse the micro trend to reverse right so you can you can see where we actually broke the first resistance actually right here where you see we highlighted because it had to push down the second resistance I'm just gonna say it's actually in this general area right here because we had a little bit of a gap All right so you can see how we press above that and then finally come back to pull back to that same exact area right it's not a coincidence that it stopped there it's just the way that markets function all right so you can see right here right at that top of that peak is exactly where we double bottom or yeah you put in that double bottom right here once twice fails it you get two wicks 
hits the actual 200 haul moving average and we're coming up underneath so this probably would have been one of my opportunities to take that type of trade given that it falls in line with a strategy that I have right so um, this is how you would use those types of uh, moving averages and also maybe volume point of control is down below you hit a previous day low you had a very low to thin volume down below really not getting any sellers trying to push that buyers take it over you know what we got some upside to try to test the overnight low of above um, the open and the pivot you know so that's kind of what we're looking for um, <clears throat> if you were trying to trade somewhere in this general area right here but if not you can see why we actually took the trade up here now I was looking for a buy the dip never got the opportunity so I got the press up at 45 to break out all right so my strategy um, for a breakout is a little bit different than my buy a dip strategy would be um, so we got the opportunity to press that you can see the moving average came underneath the trend direction is in micro trend up and uh, the VWAP actually comes underneath to hold support once, twice, three times, four times, and then we get that press up, right? So at that fourth time where we came back and we started to press up higher, that was the opportunity to really start to take that into the upside for a breakout, right? So I was I was actually targeting 52.75, but you could see um, the reason for that was because we double top, triple topped actually, quadruple topped actually four times we hit this area before we came back down. So um, it was a good target area to at least look to exit around that. I actually exited a little bit before. I think it was like three or four points per contract for four lots. So it was a good amount. Uh, but after that, the market kind of pushed up even higher. I honestly wasn't even mad about it. Uh, when you have a specific exit point, right, whether it be two points, three points, four points, and you try to get that target every single day, um, you really can't be upset if it goes any further because well you had um, you know you hit your target for the day you hit what you wanted to get for the session that you're trading and you should just be happy with that because sometimes um, you don't always get that or sometimes it doesn't always go past so you know I'm, I was happy with what we got earlier and I'll probably trade again during the London session depending on what we get so we're gonna be looking at these two areas um, right here where we're at you can see the markets came up to our very strong resistance at previous day high and uh, failed that area we had a break of the structure the microstructure right up here under this area and you could see once we were below the pivot we started to collapse and I, I believe we'll probably collapse right into this area of 42 to 43 back into the VWAP so that's going to be a target now if the moving averages come overhead and we're below the actual VWAP then we could start to target the downside of the point of control um, down here oh right here down below and also some of the volume down there too so it's just a matter of seeing how this resistance holds up if we get a couple rotations again it's probably going to look somewhere along the lines of hits this level and can it even possibly hit say somewhere right around here as long as we're not breaking above that then more than likely we're going to be pressing back down lower uh, reason being is because this is our structure low right here and that's the target area we're looking to target before we find some support now if we break this area here and we start to find some resistance around there we're gonna have that collapse back down into 29.25 so that's probably what we're gonna be targeting if we do see something along those lines but we'll just kinda of wait out for that let's go ahead and take a look at hopefully that makes sense to you guys um, I'll throw up these studies so you guys can see it even on gold NASDAQ and also um, oil so you guys can see how it looks on every chart um, honestly for me uh, these I know some people had some questions but these are these are what I call range bar charts. I use a four tick and a ten tick, but um, it honestly doesn't really matter. I've used, I've used, uh, I've used daily charts, weekly charts. I use time based charts before. I use constant volume bar charts. It's just a matter of what you like to use. I've used Ranko bar charts. Um, there's a lot of different charts you could actually use. You could use just basic bar charts if you wanted to do that. Um, and it's it's gonna be pretty much the same thing the trading process is the same thing you're gonna have to learn to understand price action movement and market structure be it for anything so you really want to get that down pack honestly the charts don't really matter and the moving averages should be the same because the moving averages actually only move after price movement right so that's why it's important to understand price action because well markets are driven by people right and emotions and the money flows around because people are pulling money out and putting money in 
right? And bigger banks have a lot of money too. So uh, we just want to understand when the market's price action movement happens, how it creates the actual structure. All of this moving averages tend to happen after because they're mathematical equations uh, and you need the numbers in the equation before you spit out an actual answer. Same thing with uh, algorithms, right? So what a lot of people are telling you where you should use algorithms or you should you know, use these indicators for best timely entry, honestly, um, those types of things are used. People, I would say bigger banks and a lot of the people with more money are trading with algorithms because they understand that algorithms are going to always follow the same process every single time it doesn't it doesn't work based off of emotion you know so the reason a lot of people fail in trading is because they get too emotional right and they're not trading actual markets they're trading their own emotions and when you do that you get what you thought was a clear picture of what's going on in the markets and you fog it up by your own emotions and then you blow out accounts and you feel that you're just a terrible trader and no you know everybody goes through it um, it happens. Learning the right process to do something is the best way, but you got to learn from the people that actually know what they're talking about. All right, so uh, again, back to what we were saying, um, algorithms do the same thing, so you should just kind of follow, right? All this stuff has to actually move in order for the mathematical equations to spit out the actual answer. So uh, let's move over to gold here real quick. Let me see if I pull this chart up here. So we'll take a look at we, what we have on gold. You guys see we had a resistance area I think that's what we're at and we triple top that area so we had one two three times that we hit that uh, we had a slight one up over here but you can see we kind of broke right through that area so uh, we may come back down this area right here is mainly where we're looking to target now All right, so we'll keep this purple but um, we're looking for the gold to maybe slip right back down to the 52s and then from there we can see if we can get some support um, but we'll see how that kind of works out. Uh, let's take a look at a four tick on gold since we spent a little bit of time on S&P. So again, you guys can see we had one, two, three, four, five, six attempts in this general area of about 58 to 60. And you can see there's a, there's a clear opportunity for a slip to the downside, right? So if Gold is going to be slipping to the downside, then S&P and NASDAQ are more than likely, along with oil, more than likely going to try to climb higher. But you guys can see right here how we're falling a little bit. Now, could we take an opportunity to trade that down? Yeah, we could. But um, again, we want to follow a specific process, meaning if we have our levels, we have our zones, we want to be able to identify a trade in the zone, not trying to take the trade outside of the zone. Right? If you want to be riskier, fine, be riskier say something along the lines of oh you know what my riskiest trade too short is going to be around 58.2 right my more conservative trades are going to be somewhere along the lines of 59.50 and then maybe even 60 right so that's kind of where i would how i would try to do it anything outside of this uh, zone is really more on the risk you like really riskier side what you're trying to do is you're trying to break below this area where you found uh, some slight support and you're trying to sell it at the lowest point to break lower right so you're giving yourself a very low reward and high high risk because you're selling it right at the lowest point right ideally you want to try to sell it up here so you take less risk and a higher reward right? and you'll be able to see that if you have good clear risk management uh, you know um, rules I think mentoring a lot of people I start to see that a lot of people um, uh, are not bad traders they just have poor risk management you know so if you can follow a good risk management strategy it's going to be beneficial because it's going to be a lot easier to follow the trade so let's take a look at what it looks like on the studies right now so take a look at how we're following this almost to the T all right so if I zoom in here just a little bit this is going to be a little bit of a learning lesson for you guys on YouTube here but take a look at what we're looking at 200 haul moving average is over 50 haul moving average is over. VWAP is over. Point of control is over. We have an overnight high right here. We have hit this overnight low one, two, three times. That's the only thing really holding support. We have a 
target right down here where you see a value area this is a, a volume node that we'd be targeting right in this area if we were to look at stacks of bids and offers you can use that too you want to use heat maps right so it's just a matter of you know, if we come back into this area we hold this level right here there's going to be a lot that's helping us try to push to the downside right we are in an uptrend and ideally to be honest if I were to follow more of a clear uh, rules based strategy it would be to break this right here we're in a micro uptrend so you want to break this structure down below and then come back pull up to the area and then look to try to short that that's going to give us another a better opportunity right because you're following specific rules specific pullbacks given that it's going to look something along the lines of this break that level pull back hold the resistance and then short that opportunity there right so that's kind of what you try to be looking for um, on gold but again that's why we're not really trying to take it at the low because this should show us some support really got no confirmation to try to reverse this down up until we actually break that structure right so target level is going to be somewhere down where this purple area is I'd say that's between 52 to 51 right so there should be a good amount of opportunity on the downside if you get what you want to see all right follow that rules based strategy you'll be okay if not um, well it's going to take a little bit longer for you to find some consistency in markets let's take a look at oil guys real quick all right so looking at oil earlier today we had some slight resistance coming in and we hit that level to the tick all right so we hit that level to the tick and we're still in this micro upward movement all right so ideally what we want to see is you know what if this market can hold this level then we're going to target the upside movement now if the market can't hold the level then we're going to probably come and collapse right back down we can use that area right there as resistance and then look to try to target these two areas right here 5120 and also right around 5040 and right, so two opportunities of trade if we keep holding this just like we did on the s p 500 um, i'll show you guys a little bit later after but we held the level and then we had an opportunity to push up same thing we'll probably be looking for on this chart too as well all right so let's take a look at a four tick see if we can get a better opportunity um, to get a closer trade or look or a closer idea of what's going on here in the markets right so let me go ahead and take this off all right so taking a look at that structure again on this four tick here you guys can see we touched this area once twice three times four times strong resistance but again we have our pullback um, and you can actually see it a little bit better all right so we had some structured support here and we broke down just a little bit now if the market pulls back up again it's gonna hold it's gonna touch that upside if not let it come into this area after we break below you can look for one rotation two rotations and you can also get that opportunity to the downside why because we'll break that structure and then we'll come for an opportunity to short into 5120 and then down below 50 40 will be our next target if we can break below all right so again taking a look though you're still in a strong strong downward trend ideally if you're looking for an upside movement well, honestly in all honesty if I'm looking for some upside trend it's gonna be above this what I want to see is the markets come above that 5260 and as you come above the level right here you want to see something along the lines of break it hit it find the support doesn't have to come all the way down but it's going to find the support and then it's going to head its way back up into the target of the gap fill all right so that's kind of what we're going to be looking for if we get all the way back up here but for now we're just going to play off of what we have uh, we're not going to try to do too much based on of all of this information right now unless we get the opportunity to hold support then we're going to target that upside of about 50 to 20 to 30 right up over here all right so that's going to be our next target for us and take profit if we get the long opportunity into there that's our next resistance this is our next resistance above that and then above this we are taking it up into the upside there all right so want to see that guys um let's take a look at what we are looking at on the um on the studies here on hide these studies and we'll look at what oil has for us right now and so if I move this chart over, which is kind of moving fairly slightly slow, uh, okay, let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. Yep, so we have that dip below. You have the moving averages overhead, uh, previous day close, overnight high, all overhead, VWAP. VWAP is slightly curving under. All right, so 
you can kind of barely see it but that purple line that just right over here to pull up is underneath right now so not much of an opportunity like I said if we were to break that trend somewhere along that line we want to break it which we're already below it and look to try to touch this upside for some resistance let the price action confirm the level then we'll look for the downside movement until then really there's not enough movement to qualify it yes you got all this other stuff up ahead up, um, previous day close low volume at the top previous day high point of control you got all of that but you don't got the price action confirming the area for the short opportunity within the structured movement so just want to stay away until you see the price action confirm the level and then you can qualify it right so touch up on one thing since this is a slight learning lesson for all of you on YouTube um, just because this was prior resistance before does not make this resistance again what makes it resistance is how the actual market moves into the level and holds the level right if it holds it as resistance with the rotations that makes it good resistance to short if it doesn't hold that as resistance there is no reason for you to look to short that right it doesn't make any sense for you to try to qualify a trade that the price comes into and just like breaks right through it right that doesn't mean your level was terrible it just means it didn't didn't go as planned that's all it is right that's why you confirm the trades before you take them by allowing the price action to confirm the level that way you stay out of getting yourself into some troublesome trades all right so let's take a look at one of our last ones here which is going to be the nasdaq for tonight uh, you can see we have some upside movement now take a look we gapped up structure kind of held and more than likely we're going to probably it looks to me like we may target some of that upside uh, again from 9200 to 9210 um, but we'll see we'll see what we kind of get I have that level right now as a resistance and there's a slight one up above now that purple area that you see was because this was a resistance that we had during the um, Asian session but you could see the market started to gradually pull up to the upside we were in a strong upward micro trend there and we kept making higher lows higher highs found the support in the same area one two three times and we pushed up higher and you can see we kind of broke a structure low but ideally we're going to try to target somewhere right around here if we can't break up above that area then we collapse back down into this area but if we do break above you can see right where that red um, resistance rectangle is is where we'll probably try to target if we break above this resistance peak right there right so um, but again we made it purple so we can see if the market comes back to the level uh, if we'll have some opportunity of support all right let's take a look at the four tick real quick together uh, take a look at that some good structure formulating on the four tick for a micro move uh, to the upside doesn't mean that the trend is completely up um, what that basically is showing you is that you know if even if you're in a downtrend there's going to be your micro moves uh, in the direction or a pullback right so it's important to know the bigger picture but it's also important to understand the smaller picture but keeping the bigger picture in mind right um, for me ideally if I'm look to try to trade something I have rules based off of peaks and valleys what I like to see for supports and resistances and certain things have to break in order for me to say you know what I'm gonna be going long I'm gonna be going short this and that right so you can see this was a clear level and we're touching this resistance right here um, more than likely we're probably gonna try to attempt that 9200 may be the ideal area to try to attempt but taking a look at this structure here in fact, I'm going to clear this off real quick so we can get a better idea of what's going on. But we're kind of right in the middle. Definitely won't want to trade right in that middle. If you didn't have the opportunity to say somewhere right around here or a little bit lower right there, then mm, don't think you want to try to trade that unless you want to break out to the upside. Right? So you can see how this market is structuring itself. Take a look at the opportunity you have. If you're trying to take this trade, it's going to be right here. Right? So one, two, three, four attempts. We'll try to see if we can break that upside. Take a look at what we got on the studies here real quick. Uh, you got a 200-day haul moving average. The VWAP is still underneath. Point of control slightly up above. Overnight high up above. Um, moving average is underneath as well. Uh, given that you can't break this structure. If it breaks below that structure right there, 
then you're probably going to be attempting that downside pass the VWAP. But if you can't, you'll definitely take a look for an opportunity to the upside to press through that point of control and try to touch the upside of 9200 to 9210. So that's kind of what we're waiting on right now. But again, trading right in the middle can be risky because in the middle is where you got the value area, you got a lot of choppiness, and it's going to be a frustrating trade because you just don't know. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going up? Is it going down? Right, so to stay away from that, well, just stay away from trading in the middle. Trading in the middle of the range can be dangerous for that reason solely. Um, but all right, guys, that is our market analysis for the London session. Uh, if you guys did like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. If you have any questions, you can reach us at Trade Pro Academy. My email is david at tradeproacademy.com. Um, love to hear from you guys if you guys have any questions any comments just go ahead and pop them in here on YouTube and then I will get back to you when I got the time you guys take care have a good